Now this session is on uh, rolling test or we can say Parkinson gear tester because this setup is actually invented by Parkinson. So that's why this is uh, this one is also called as a Parkinson gear tester. So uh, let us first of all try to understand construction and working of this Parkinson gear tester. So this is 3D representation of entire arrangement. If you look at uh, this 3D and this 2D diagrams are given for same setup. Now here you can consider this one as a master gear. Uh, if you just consider this, this is having a bed first of all. This bed is having two guideways. On this two guideways we have floating carriage. This is having floating carriage. Uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, this this one is a permanent. This is a permanent carriage, and this carriage is a floating carriage. So, one bed with two guideways and two carriages are given. One is this one is a fixed, and second one is the floating carriage. So, this floating carriage that can uh, uh, move on these two guideways, and this this floating carriage is actually spring loaded. So always this spring will try to keep contact between two gears because these two carriages they are having two spindles, two vertical spindles and on these two vertical spindles we are fixing two gears. So if you look in this schematic arrangement, this is the bed. On that bed we have two carriages. This carriage is fixed and this carriage can slide to and fro on bed. Then two vertical spindles are given. On these two vertical spindles, we are arranging two gears. One is the master gear, which is error free, which is our reference gear. And second gear is under test, on which we want to perform rolling test. So rolling test gear is fixed on floating carriage. So this floating carriage is again spring loaded against this fixed, fixed carriage, uh, a fixed carriage. So always that spring is visible here in this schematic diagram. So always this spring will try to keep continuous positive contact between both the gears. Yeah. Now, if any error is present in the gear under test with reference to master gear, then due to that error, this master gear will try to push this gear under test and as on base we are having one guideway then that guideway only allow movable carriage to move in one direction because one direction is only it, it, it is having one degree of freedom only along the bed axis so if any error is present in gear under uh, test compared to master gear then due to that error some force will be exerted by master gear on gear under test and due to that force, this floating carriage or movable carriage that will slide on the guideway. On the other side, we have used one dial indicator. This dial indicator is visible here as well as it is visible in this 3D image of rolling tester or Parkinson gear tester. Yeah. So that movement of carriage due to error will be indicated by dial indicator. Because dial indicator plunger is in contact with floating carriage. So if due to any error, if this carriage will move, then this plunger is having direct contact, then same movement will be transferred to plunger and plunger movement will be indicated by dial indicator. So this is what the basic working of floating, uh, basic working of Parkinson gear tester or rolling gear tester. And you can see here in this diagram, just try to understand this diagram. If the gear under test is truly replica of master gear, because master gear is, is assumed as error free, defect free. So master gear is not having any defect. Yeah. So if master gear 
and gear and stress both are identical then for one rotation of this gear under test we are observing fluctuation in dial indicator so one revolution is actually indicated by this one circle so during movement uh, during this movement during one rotation of gear under test if any fluctuation is not there is no fluctuation then we get perfectly circular geometry but here in this image too you can see which is considered as a moderate defect if minor defect is there then during one rotation of gear this carriage will move slightly to and fro and that to and fro movement will be uh, captured by this dial indicator then you get this type of uh, uneven periphery of circle circle periphery is uneven but this is considerable uh, a considerable or the acceptable variation or acceptable error but if you look here more worst unsatisfactory because for one rotation if you see too much random errors because we are not getting perfectly circular or the more or less circle type of uh, trace clear then here it is indication that maximum variation up to this again maximum variation and then maximum variation. so what we are trying here for one complete rotation we are trying to plot dial indicator result variation along the along the periphery of this circle so that is what the rolling test or parkinson tester now let us try to see actual working of parkinson gear tester using one video Double twang gear roll tester. Our double twang gear roll tester. By gear manufacturers and users, the instrument is useful for checking double flag total composite error, tooth to tooth error of transmission gears. The instrument has fixed slide and floating slide resting on the CI base. The floating slide is mounted on linear motion guides in order to achieve the excellent sensitivity. The component gear is mounted on fixed slide and master gear is mounted on floating slide. On meshing both the gears with each other and by rotating them, the test can be performed. The deviations in other parameters are checked and criteria of acceptance of gear is decided as per the DIN or AGMA standards. We also offer big models of double flank gear roll tester according to the size of the gear to be checked. Some of the photographs of bigger models of the instrument are shown here. Okay. So I think uh, basic working of Parkinson gear tester is clear. So you have seen in that video what we are doing. We are we are putting here gear, uh, our uh, testing gear, and then after we are rotating this master gear such that one rotation of gear under test that rotates and during that one rotation we are continuously observing this dial indicator deflection and that acceptance range is already marked here on this pen as per the Indian standard see how much variation in dial indicator is accepted so in this way we can we can do rolling test of gears so this is what basic working of uh, gear rolling tester. I hope basic working is clear. Now, if you look here, what are the errors we can check using this type of testing? So we can check circular pitch error. We can check profile error. Means whether involute profile is proper or not. We can check eccentricity error. So these are the different errors which we can check or which we can test using rolling test. Now, 
two types of rolling test we can perform if you just remember in that video double plank test they they were talking about double plank test so two two types of test you can perform double flank test and single flank test so double flank test and single flank test they can measure different types of errors so first of all let us try to understand double flank test as per name suggests if you look here uh, two gears are indicated here and when you make contact between teeth of both the gears then in double flank test both the gears this one is a master gear and this one is the gear under test both the gears they are not having any backlash so if there is zero backlash then flank of both this uh, both the side flanks of teeth they are in contact and that's why that is called as a double flank test because there is no backlash so here and here both the flanks of teeth they are in contact that's why that is called as a double flank test so if this call as a double flank test so without backlash there is no backlash and if there is error in if gear is having eccentricity in it then this double flank test that can measure error in eccentricity gear eccentricity so when if you look you get for one cycle this wave is indicating one cycle and for one cycle if you see this this peaks and valleys they are indicating actually results of dial indicator or or the movement of uh, carriage uh, that fluctuation of carriage they are indicated by this peaks and valleys on this one wavelength so on that one wavelength we can get this peak and valley now after getting this plot from double flank rolling test you get this type of plot then how to find out uh, eccentricity or the run out run out and eccentricity both are seen so you can clearly see here for entire cycle if you look for entire cycle just measure distance between maximum peak to deepest valley like in case of uh, roughness measurement we are talking about maximum peak to valley height so same here maximum peak to if you see maximum valley so this height this is called as a total composite error in double flank so this total composite error is indicating us uh, eccentricity present in the gear so outcome of outcome of double flank test is run out radial run out and eccentricity radial run out is half of eccentricity generally yeah so double flank test can give us error in eccentricity now second is single flank test so in single flank test we are having some backlash here you can see here some backlash on the one flank is in contact with the another flank of opposite gear in case of double flank test both the flanks they were having contact but here only one flank is in contact during the motion transmission that's why this is called as a single flank test so again you get similar representation for one cycle this dotted curve is in sinusoidal curve that indicating one cycle and during that one cycle you get so many peaks and valleys yeah so again if you measure maximum peak to deepest valley height which is written in, uh, which is written here as total composite error then this total composite error is actually indicating pitch error circular pitch circular pitch error so single flank test is used to check circular pitch error double flank test that is used to check eccentricity error so that is from rolling test and rolling test is more preferred in industry for quick assessment of gear because quickly and rapidly you can check error in gears so here we are ending this series on gear metrology this one is the last topic rolling test is the last topic from gear metrology so i hope you understood gear metrology and it's important if you have any doubt any question you can ask queries okay have a happy learning